Hey there, welcome to the Winx Forever podcast. I'm Lola, creator, host, and lifelong Winx fan. I've taken a deep dive into the fairy cool universe of Winx Club. So whether you've been a fan since 2004, like myself, or you vaguely remember the show from your childhood, or maybe you're even being introduced to it for the first time, welcome. This is the Winx Forever podcast. <laughs> Hello, fairy friends. Welcome back to the Winx Forever podcast. I'm your host, Lola Valentine, and we are officially back with season three of the podcast, which is just absolutely wild. I uploaded the very first episode of season one over a year ago. So I guess happy birthday to the podcast. Um <laughs> I know I say this a lot, but seriously, I cannot thank you guys enough um, for all of the kind messages that I get online about the show and about the content that I create for social media. Um, It just, it truly means the world to me that I get to connect with so many of you from around the world about our favorite fairies. So truly from the bottom of my heart, thanks for listening to the Winx Forever podcast. What is in store for season three, you ask? Well, I've got lots of ideas, but the main thing being um, we are going to start our deep dive into the Winx Club original series, uh, starting with season one, episode one. So each week I'll discuss and dissect an episode of season one of Winx Club and even compare the original English Cineloom dub with the four kids dub that I grew up with and debunking some of the myths about the differences between the two English dubs. I'll also have some very cool friends joining me to discuss their favorite episodes of season one and we will go through the series together. So if you are rewatching the series along with the airing of the podcast episodes, uh, you can find where to watch the Cineloom and 4Kids dub episodes of season one of Winx Club in the description below or on the playlists on my YouTube channel. So be sure to check those out if you guys want to watch along with me. So without further ado, uh, let's get into season one, episode one of the original Winx Club series. If you're new here, you're probably wondering what the heck are Rye and Poor Kids and why are there so many different dubbings of the same show? And both are perfectly valid questions. The TLDR is that Wings Club had two separate runs. The first was the original series, first four seasons, which was produced from 2004 to 2009 by the Rainbow Animation Studio in Italy. And that was before Viacom became a co-producer of the studio. After Viacom started managing Rainbow in 2011, it began production on a revival series, which was jointly produced between Italy and the United States. So this revival began in 2011. It had four specials, which kind of summarized and retold the story of the original first and second seasons. So a lot of you probably grew up with these specials and well on into the Nickelodeon era of Winx Club, but us OG Winxers won't hold that against you. However, for the rest of us that grew up with the first run of Winx Club seasons one through four, 2004 to 2009, Depending on where you grew up in the world, you either had a dub that was based on the original Italian dub known as the Ray English dub or the Four Kids dub. So Cineloom created what we call the uh, Ray English dub, and it is the company that dubbed the entire original series seasons one through four in English. It is a nearly exact translation from the Italian scripts of the show. So the Cinelum dub is completely uncut without any edits or censorship, which is why this English dub is the favored one by many in the fandom. However, the lack of editing also led to some script mistakes being kept in the show as well. Then you have the 4Kids Licensing Corporation. Uh, They were an American film television production company known for dubbing foreign animated shows, especially Japanese anime. Um, They dubbed Pokemon when it first came to America. They dubbed Yu-Gi-Oh! They dubbed Sonic X. They dubbed um, pretty much any Saturday morning anime cartoon. They dubbed it. And so um, 4Kids Entertainment was the 
first American production company to dub the first three seasons of Winx Club, 2004 to 2009, before their contract was permanently revoked in 2009. A lot of fans have a lot of problems with this version of Winx Club because four kids took a lot of liberties from the original Italian script and and the original Cineloom script. Um, they reworked a lot of episodes. They removed a lot of unnecessary scenes. And the dialogue, for the most part, is completely different. And since it's so highly edited, um, four kids gets a bad rap in the fandom because of how many liberties they took. Uh, fans of the original version have also complained that four kids doesn't follow the original storyline, which I disagree with, but I grew up with the four kids version. So I will be a little biased. So why are there so many different versions or different dubs of Winx Club? Well, Winx Club is an international franchise. It started in Italy. The original show is made in Italian and then they sent the show off to Cineloom in Canada to dub it in English. And then the English dub from the Canadian production company got shipped off to English speaking territories, excluding the U S and they then distributed the show to non English speaking territories, which those countries dubbed the show in their own language based on the Cineloom English dub, which is based on the Italian dub. So there are still going to be variations across all of the dubs because we are translating it three times. You know, we're translating it from Italian to English to native language. So any iteration of Winx Club you watch, there's going to be discrepancies from the original Italian. That's just how translation works. What happened with four kids though, is they took the entire script of Winx Club and decided to piece it together the way that they thought made more sense for an American audience. Do I disagree with some of the changes that they made? Sure. But do I think that it flows a little better and that they took the American media expertise that they had and and put that spin on it? Absolutely. Um, so I love this dub. Um, and I believe that the people that give it the harshest criticism are the people that have never seen it all the way through. So maybe in doing these side-by-side -side comparisons during these deep dive episodes, um, it'll be fun to kind of introduce this new version of Winx Club that a lot of people have not seen all the way through. Um, and maybe, you know, some people might give it a chance for once. So with all of that to say, that is the difference between the right English and the four kids version. Um, that is pretty much all you need to know about the different dubs of Wings Club. So season one, episode one, the title of the original Italian is called Una Fatal a Gardenia, which translates to a fairy in Gardenia. Shocker. While in the Cineloom dub, the episode is titled An Unexpected Event. And finally, the episode title in the Four Kids dub is called Feels Like Magic, which also happens to be the title of one of the songs often featured in the Four Kids original soundtrack of the show. So the description of this episode, according to my trusty um, Winx wiki, reads... Bloom gets involved in a fight between a magical fairy, Stella, and a gang of ghouls headed by Nut the Ogre. Bloom takes Stella home, and there Stella introduces her to the world of magics, where the College of Althea for Inspiring Fairies is located. All right. So <laughs> I guess let's just hop into the episode. What happens? What what kind of unfolds in in this first episode of Winx Club? So we open up to kind of this overview of this town. There kind of is this broad shot of the city, but then we see um, Welcome to Gardenia sign. Then we get a transition shot of her townhome, but then to a sketch of her townhome. So we get the shot of her sketch table and we see that this girl is a very creative person. She likes to draw. She likes to sketch. Um, pre pretty cool to establish that in the very first scene. 
Um, we then see a shot of her fast asleep um, in her bed and um, Vanessa, her mom, comes to wake her up for school, quote unquote. And so in a panic, she um, gets up and runs around and um, like gets dressed and realizes that her mom had just pulled a prank on her, that it is not time for school. She's actually on summer vacation. So um, Bloom's mom finds a book about fairies on the floor that Bloom has been reading and um, makes a note about how she thinks that it's silly that Bloom is reading this, that maybe she's too old for it. Um, We kind of get that sense, but Bloom kind of defends it and is like, you know, it's, it's cool to her. Like she, she still enjoys fantasy fairies, magic, um, and reading about them. The scene ends with Vanessa leaving Bloom's room saying that now that she's on summer vacation, she can help her out in her shop, which is, we later find out she is a florist. Vanessa is a florist, has a flower shop. Um, Bloom refuses and goes downstairs where Bloom's parents give her a present that she thinks is going to be a scooter, um, but it actually turns out to be this uh, red bicycle that she looks very rather unenthused at, um, which is, I mean, she's 16, probably was expecting a scooter or a car or something that wasn't a bicycle. So she takes her new bike and she decides to go to the park and she runs into which we can only assume is a school friend um or acquaintance or person she knows <laughs> i wouldn't call her a friend mitzi so she runs into mitzi and mitzi is kind of this rich girl um show off she is mocking bloom for um not going on vacation like all of her other friends but um going to be staying in gardenia So Bloom heads to the park where she lets her pet Kiko go play and explore on his own. Um, And she sits down with an apple and is kind of relaxing when all of a sudden Kiko returns screaming and clearly going crazy about something that is behind the bushes. So Bloom follows him to investigate what's going on and what scared him when she discovers a battle between a fairy and an ogre. So, um, clearly Bloom notices that these ghouls that are with this ogre attacking this girl are outnumbering her. And she was, um, it was very hard for her to hold her ground. Um, when not the ogre commands his ghouls to restrain the fairy and then he takes her scepter. And it appears that Nut had won the battle, right? Um, like she was like, almost donezo (laughs) but then bloom jumps in doing what she doesn't really know yet because she just kind of had this instinct that she had to help lol what's really funny about this scene to me is that bloom literally has absolutely no idea what's going on she just knows that she has to help like something deep down inside of her burning to just help this girl that she's never met dressed weird weird things attacking her, you know, whatever nut sends her, his ghouls after her. And she emits this crazy force field that, um, stops them from getting to her and Kiko. Um, and then of course nut grabs her and she emits a crazy powerful energy field, like power burst that not only makes him let go, but he also drops the scepter. So after Stella and Bloom defeat the beasts, nut flees and Stella collapses on the ground unconscious. After Stella collapses on the ground, her magic winks transformation goes away and Bloom... <laughs> Tells Kiko that they need to take her home because she needs help. Um, pre- pretty, pretty straightforward. Very, very eventful kind of sequence here. Meanwhile, Nut uh, reports back to his, I guess, bosses. You know, um, we don't know who these people are yet. We just know that they are kind of these ominous figures floating in the sky. And he is telling them what happened. And they are like, oh, my gosh, you're such a failure. Um, why did we trust you with this mission? That sort of thing. So after Nut reveals that he has no idea what this earthling girl looks like because he was not wearing his glasses, which he seems so funny to me that this is a, this is a, 
<laughs> scene because he literally is like an ogre with glasses seems kind of lame. Like that is hilarious to me that they would write that in. Like, of course, like he wants to be this fierce ogre, but he's nearsighted. So he <laughs> needs glasses and he doesn't want to look dorky. So he doesn't wear them, but he doesn't really help him on his missions. So he shows them that he has a piece of Bloom's clothing, which he gives to a hunter troll. Uh, this really big, scary thing um has nipple rings which i think is hilarious um but <laughs> nickelodeon actually when they dubbed the the first season special they removed the nipple rings on the hunter troll which is so freaking stupid but i digress so they go and give this troll a piece of Bloom's clothing and they're off to find her and actually complete their mission of capturing Stella's scepter, which is what they were after to begin with. Enjoying this episode of the Winx Forever podcast? Leave us a review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So back on Earth, Bloom is explaining to her parents what happened and her mom and dad are kind of in disbelief. Like, you know, you're you're saying what happened? You know, like it was very funny because Mike clearly in disbelief um, thinks that they need to call the police. Stella needs to go to the hospital and probably Bloom, too, because she's saying that she saw ghouls and trolls and fairies. So. Clearly, Mike is like, all right, let's bring this down to the real world. What actually happened? You know, trying to get to the bottom of everything when Stella actually wakes up and is like, please don't call the police. (laughs) So Stella wakes up and is explaining who she is, why she was there. Um, When Mike interrupts her and is like, clearly this girl is bonkers. We need to call the police. And (laughs) Stella gets frustrated and turns his phone and receptor to um (laughs) into a cabbage and a carrot classic so stella then confirms what bloom was telling mike and vanessa that she was indeed attacked by these ghouls and that ogre and that bloom actually saved her life with an energy field and an energy blast that helped them escape from from the monsters and Bloom's like yeah I have no idea how I did it and Stella's like well a fairy doesn't have to know how she just does it and Bloom this is the first time we ever make the connection that Bloom could be a fairy um because Stella literally is just like yeah you're totally a fairy you know (laughs) um of course I can only imagine what Mike and Vanessa are thinking because they haven't had any kind of you know magic up until now except for when they found bloom but that that is that is probably a spoiler alert for those that have never seen this the series so we're gonna we're gonna keep going so stella is like super chatty and she's like yeah like so you should definitely enroll for this new program at alfia college because that's where i'm going and it's a school for fairies like us and da, 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 all the stuff and mike is just losing his head he has no idea what's going on you are listening to the Winx Forever podcast. All right. So the next scene, Nut and the hunting troll appear kind of like at a, at a warehouse looking thing um, in Gardenia. And they begin their hunt for Bloom and Stella. Then when we come back to Bloom's house, Stella and Bloom go up to Bloom's room and Bloom is kind of showing her around. Um, and their dialogue here is very... Um, I don't know. It's very choppy, I guess it feels like to me. Again, I grew up with the four kids version, so I am very used to the dialogue in the four kids version um, and everything in the right English Cineloom dub really sounds um, kind of choppy, not very natural, I guess, um, in in their dictation and in the way that they speak. Um, but it's just funny to to see the differences. So Stella is kind of um, talking about, you know, 
your room is very nice and and I love your drawings. Um, Bloom asks her if her world is uh, similar to the world in the book that she was reading the night before, fairies, myth, or reality. And Stella's like, well, maybe, you know, kind of, but this is much nicer. And Bloom's like, well, I guess it, this, I don't understand this line. She goes, well, I guess it all depends on your perspective. What? What does that mean? Anyway, I do really appreciate how um, in this first episode, Stella is explaining to Bloom how her powers were unlocked, that her powers were linked to a very powerful emotion such as fear, um, fear for Stella um, getting beat by the ogre, fear for Bloom also getting beat by the ogre and ghouls. So that's what brought on her magic energy shield and her um, energy blast that blasted nut. So it's, it's funny to me rewatching the first season and actually seeing how many things fate, the wink saga, the Netflix original series inspired by winks club actually did take from the first season and they're all very subtle details, but they're there if you look for them. And so um, the fact that Stella is over here explaining to Bloom, well, your power is actually linked to emotion. And that's what that's what uncovered your powers in the park. That's why all of a sudden, you know, you you revealed your powers was because of the the high energy, the the high emotions that were running in the park with Nut and the ghouls. So absolutely wild. Um, then Stella kind of gives her this like challenge or, um, like this exercise of, she takes all of the pens at Bloom's desk and she merges them all into one big pencil. And then she tells Bloom to try and Bloom obviously with her powers just today, like showing up, she, can't put them back the way that they were as Stella instructed. And so Stella's like, well, that's why you should come to Althea with me. They can teach you how to control your powers. So then Bloom and Stella kind of start talking about, well, where is Althea? What, like, tell me more. So Stella's telling her and Bloom is trying to imagine all of it. And Stella's like, well, I can just show you. And she whips out this um, this piece of paper that she throws on the floor and it expands and it gets bigger and it becomes a portal. Um, Stella calls it a, um, a bottomless postcard in, in this dub, but in the four kids dub, she calls it an express portal, which makes so much more sense to me. So <laughs> we're just going to call it an express portal. Um, and she steps on top of it and it's like a postcard of Althea and she, um, when she steps on top of it, she goes down into the portal on the floor. I loved this concept of having just a a mundane little object like a postcard be a portal. Like that is so cool. Of course, like it's literally like usually on postcards, you say like, wish you were here, you know, but you actually could bring someone to where you are by sending them an express portal. That's, I don't know. That's so cool. And such a fun little, I don't know, detail of this is happening. Nut and his hunting troll are still looking for Stella and Bloom. And he's like, I can smell them. I can smell them. And then, (laughs) and then they go into the portal and he's like, well, just kidding. I can't smell them anymore. They're not here. (laughs) So this scene um, happens very differently in the four kids version where they get plopped into the magical forest that surrounds Althea and Stella's kind of like, this is Althea and Bloom's like, well, what about my, my school in Gardenia? And Stella's like, ah, you know, I've got to leave tomorrow with her without you. And then she's like, all right, I'll sleep on it. What? That is not any information to go by. In the four kids version, instead of Stella just saying like, yeah, so this is it. um, She actually goes through and like describes like what actually goes on at Althea, what they teach, what kind of people attend Althea. And then she talks through the different schools in magic. So Red Fountain and Cloud Tower. And in the four kids version, Stella shares that in order to help Bloom, like make her decision, you know, about attending Althea 
and in moving to magics, um, she said that she had, she invited some of the specialists to come over to her house and like meet her and her parents and talk to them about going to a school in a different realm. Um, very, very different from the Ray English and the loom dub. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I really appreciated this deeper context that Stella gives in the four kids version. I think that it is needed. I think that it was helpful. Um, I don't think that it dumbed anything down. I think that it was actually helped move the story along more. So the fact that, um, The fact that four kids just added this whole scene into this scene where Stella brings Bloom to the forest um, around Afia is just absolutely, I don't know. I think it's creative and I think that it, it adds a lot to the episode. So they jump back through the portal and then the hunting troll is like, oh, I smell them again. They're actually right here in this townhouse. Um, So they sneak around back and are coming through the back door when Kiko notices and he's like trying to like prevent them from coming in. So in true cartoon logic fashion, this little bitty bunny is like stacking up everything that is like twice his weight, (laughs) you know, so that he can like barricade the door, but it ultimately fails. And Mike and Vanessa think that the bunny is just causing a racket when really it's a hunting troll coming into their house. (laughs) So Bloom and Stella hear the commotion downstairs and um, go and see what's up when they see that the ogre and the troll and the ghouls are all downstairs smashing up Mike and Vanessa's living room. And this is actually a, a fun piece of trivia. Stella's transformation is the first transformation sequence we see in the first episode in the first season ever, um, which is super fun to me that Stella is the one that is introducing Bloom to this whole world and that she kind of is the catalyst for all of this. Um, Super cool. And here's the thing that I don't understand with the Cinelum dub coming from an American that grew up with the four kids version. In the four kids version, there's always something happening. There's not a lot of slow scenes. There's always dialogue. There's always music in the background. A perfect example of this is after Stella transforms in the Ray English version. <laughs> There's just this cut scene to the troll, the hunting troll, and he just kind of steps into the door frame a little more and like into the room. There's no dialogue. There's no music. There's nothing. There's just step, step. And then he just steps. It's so it's awkward. Things like that. The pacing, the the setup. I just I don't find that it flows as well as the four kids version does, even with all of four kids unnecessary sometimes edits that they made to or rearrangement that they made to some of these episodes. Um, It's truly, I mean, it truly watches like a different show almost. Um, And, and I don't think that is necessarily a bad thing either way. Whereas in the four kids version, that scene is totally omitted. Like we didn't need that little step, 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 you know, of the like hunting troll, just what, (laughs) What was that? You are listening to the Winx Forever podcast. If you've wanted to be on the Winx Forever podcast, well, now you can. Leave me a 30 second to one minute voicemail over on speakpipe.com forward slash Winx Forever podcast, and I might feature you on the next episode. You can leave me a message or a question that you would like for me to answer on the show, and I'd be happy to feature you. Be sure to include your name and where you're from as well. So the next scene, um, Stella's like, we're outnumbered. We need to split them up. Um, And Bloom is like, I will take care of the ghouls. Cool. Yeah, I got an idea. And so she runs out into the backyard where she clearly didn't have an idea. Um, And the ghouls get distracted by a little like shuffling around pot on the ground and it's actually Kiko underneath the pot and Bloom picks it up and like he's like terrified like little shaky Kiko um that scene was also omitted uh completely in 
the four kids version, there was no like pot or pan with Kiko in it. Um, it was just bloom running out into the backyard with the ghouls and it's like, well, great. Now what? When Stella actually shoots nut and he goes flying out the back door and onto his own ghouls and like smushing them. And so then in the rain, English version, this is when Stella tells Bloom that she's called the specialists in to help them defeat these these monsters that are attacking her home. And so the troll is like quickly approaching them. They don't know what to do. Stella's kind of like used a lot of magic and is kind of weak. And so they are like on the ground, like about to get pulverized by this troll when we hear some like cool music, a like um, a sort of whip comes out of nowhere and like wraps up the troll and captures them a little bit. And we see a group of what Stella calls specialists. Um, these four teenage looking guys in um, like mission outfits with capes and a bunch of different weapons. And um, one of them has him, has the troll on the end of his whip. It was very interesting that Brandon said that this was his first mission, even though going into the school year, we know that the specialists are a year older than the Winks because Stella knew them the year prior. I don't know. It's really interesting. So all of the guys are kind of tackling each monster, the guys are focused on getting the troll secure while Riven is <laughs> fighting the ghouls. And then he gets absolutely like the daylights knocked out of him by Nut when um, Bloom and Stella both um, shoot energy beams at him and he collapses. So once Nut sees that his ghouls have been de defeated, his troll is now caught and that he is outnumbered by the specialists and the two fairies, he decides to just vanish, to just, you know, go away, just peace out of there. Um, probably smart on his part, but uh, <laughs> in the Ray English dub, um, he just kind of like claps his hands and like a beam of light like comes and like takes him away. But um, in the four kids version, same thing happens. But while he's clapping his hands, he says, we'll meet again, Princess Stella. And she goes, oh, I'm sure not looking forward to that, which I think is so quintessential Stella to me. Like she's so like she has a lot of fun quips and like just kind of funny banter. Um and I, that's why I really fell in love with the four kids version of Stella. Um, not only is she my favorite character, but she's just very confident and self-assured and she knows her powers. She is very fun loving. And I just, you, you really get that sense in the first episode with the four kids dub. Whereas in the Ray English dub, you kind of just think that she's a little bit stuck up, I guess, by some of the things that she says, because when Bloom's like, well, I guess I am a fairy after helping her shoot um, a power beam at, at Nut, she, she's like, well, I guess I am a fairy. And then Stella's like, well, of course you are. I'm never wrong. Like, I don't know. There's just a very different approach to Stella, I feel like, in the Cineloom dub versus the Four Kids dub. And naturally, I gravitate towards the four kids dub because, again, I am biased. That is what I grew up with. But also, I just think that that it is well done. Like, I think that it is um, put together better. And I don't know. That's just my that's just my opinion. All right. Um, moving on. So then Stella introduces all of the specialists. And of course, this is a big spoiler. Um, Brandon and Sky's identities are switched. So she actually introduces them with their switched identities because nobody knows that at this point that their identities are switched. I'm so sorry if that is a spoiler. Spoiler alert. That is what happens. Anyway, that is very, very far into the season. So we are continuing on. I also noticed at the end of this episode, Mike comes out into the backyard with his firefighter uniform on when he definitely didn't have that on before when they were discussing, like, should they send Bloom to 
Alfia, should they not, you know, whatever. He was in his normal clothes, but he comes out and he's like all ready for a fire, I guess. I don't know. And then the whole sequence of the guys leaving, there's no dialogue in the Ray English version, but in the four kids version, there's a ton of dialogue and it ends with Brandon, AKA Sky, um, saying that he like, see a bloom. Sure. Hope I see you at Alfia, which blooms like, he, 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 you know, like, oh, wow. <laughs> so probably helped her make your decision for sure. So the next morning, Mike and Vanessa are cleaning up their house when Stella comes down and is like, I can help you clean. You know, she's like, yeah, I can like, it would be much easier if you would let me help you with magic. And she, and Mike's like, uh, no, thanks. I really would rather you not. (laughs) So then Vanessa and Bloom come in with Bloom holding some luggage and says that she's all packed and ready to go. So Mike is kind of freaking out. Like, I can't believe we agreed to this. You know, what, what if something happens to you? What if those monsters come back and attack you? And then she's like, well, I'll be careful to all this stuff. I just can't believe that like truly they were fine with, well, you know, sure. We'll let you go off into another dimension with a girl you just met yesterday. You know what I mean? Like uh, parent of the year award, you know, like, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, Mike and Vanessa are so chill and I love how chill they are in the whole series and they're so supportive of their daughter. And I think that secretly deep down, they knew this was going to be her destiny eventually if her powers ever came back um, because they knew that she had powers. And I wonder even if growing up, maybe at some points, Bloom displayed any sort of magic, not knowing it when she was little. So I, I'm, I'm curious if that was ever a thing for Bloom's growing up in in Gardenia with Mike and Vanessa, but that is neither here nor there. there. Um, So Bloom's like, well, can they come? Stella, is that like allowed? She's like, well, it's against the rules, but rules are meant to be broken. Um, And the four kids dub, Stella actually says, um, uh, you know, well, we can't use the portal because normal humans can't go through it. But I bet my my scepter can can handle a little trans-dimensional puddle jump like this. That is the verbatim words. And I think that it's so, that's so clever. Like, yeah, like absolutely your scepter can handle it. Like that's how you, you that's how your scepter travels through portals and dimensions. Like ugh, it's so good. So Stella takes everybody to Alfia and that's kind of where this ends is they they land on this kind of cliff looking over the forest surrounding Alfia and Alfia in the distance in the four kids dub the ending was truly truly magical because like I mentioned the title of the episode is titled the same as the song that is featured in this episode at the end um when they go through kind of like showing you know, the establishing shots of Magix and Althea when they arrive through Stella's portal. Um, the the song, It Feels Like Magic, starts playing and uh, it just gives me goosebumps every time. And I love it. If you're enjoying this episode of the Winx Forever podcast, consider following us on social media or wherever you get your podcasts. So that is the end of the first episode. Um, Listen, there are a lot, a lot of um, different arrangements for the four kids episode that I would like to point out. Um, For for example, the first scene in the four kids dub is not Bloom waking up to her mother um, telling her that it's it's time for school. It's actually, you know, we have the establishing shots of her gardenia and all of that, but it's actually Bloom riding around on her bike. So in the four kids dub, we don't get the sequence of Bloom being excited for a scooter and then ending up with a bike and being disappointed. We have Bloom already riding around gardenia on her bike. 
We have dialogue in this sequence of her riding around on her bike. She says hi to a neighbor and um, the neighbor says, you know, say hi to your mother for me as she is making her way towards the park. And so that is kind of how fast paced um, you kind of get a feel of how fast paced the four kids stuff actually is because the opening scene, we start out with Bloom in the park fighting Stella, fighting the ogre, fighting the ghouls. Um, All of that happens so fast. We don't get any of this other, um, I guess, filler scenes yet, you know? Um, So after Bloom defeats the, the ghouls and Stella defeats the ogre, Stella collapses. Boom's like, we need to get her home. Same scene happens with Nut and the tricks um, in his glasses. But then um, the next morning, it it jumps to the next morning. And so um, Stella, you know, slept, you know, all that night in their guest room. So Vanessa, the next morning, finds Bloom asleep and sees her book on the ground and she's like fairies like bloom hasn't read that book since she was little um and she's like rise and shine a beautiful day await and she's like you know that used to be your favorite book you used to pretend you were a fairy you could do it for hours and then she switches the the topic and she's like so who's that girl fast asleep the one in the guest room and then bloom automatically wakes up she goes so it wasn't a dream and she's like and she's still awake like leave her there like she's still sleeping she's like her friend's cousin and she's visiting from far away that's a lot of information but i need i need to express like you know how different the two dialogues are in these scenes because in the original cinelum dub we get this scene right off the bat, you know, this is the first scene we see in Wings Club. Um, This is now only five minutes into Wings Club and we're just now getting this scene. And it's, it's crazy, the different contexts, you know. So then we get the scene of Bloom and her parents in the kitchen where Mike's, (laughs) instead of talking about her hopping out in the shop, um, Mike is like, Hey, like today we're going to clean out the garage, Bloom. And Bloom's like, well, I have a ton of more important things to do, dad. Mike's like, well, what kind of important things, you know? And she's like, well, do you remember when I was into fairies and witches? And she, and he goes, of course I do. You were so cute, always pretending to know magic. And it, and it gives us that scene of, of little baby bloom, you know, and, and the stars background and stuff. (laughs) And bloom's like, well, that's kind of the thing I wanted to talk to you about, you know, my friend, the one in the guest room and then bloom's mom, Vanessa is like, give her a break. She just wants to spend the day with her friend. And then Mike compromises. This is such a like odd sequence now that I'm watching it back, but he's like, well, get the groceries and you're free for the rest of the day. And she's like, well, thanks. And so she takes her bike out, goes and gets groceries. And that's when she runs into Mitzi. She's, she's walking her bike along the sidewalk. And she's like, I, I haven't felt any powers today because the scene with the ogre was technically the day before in the four kids dub. And she's like, I hope that they haven't worn off. And then she runs into Mitzi. Mitzi is a jerk, you know, classic, blah, blah, blah. And (laughs) Mitzi makes a, makes a comment about her bike and Bloom's like, there's nothing wrong with my bike. My dad gave it to me, which I thought was funny because in the four kids version, you know, we don't see her dad giving it to her, but whatever. As she's leaving the scene with Mitzi, she tells Kiko, if I am a fairy Kiko, like remind me to turn her into a monkey. Like, (laughs) I think that's so funny Um, because it's just so like off the cuff. Like anyway, so then we get the scene with um, Nut and the tricks talking about his mission and his glasses and the hunting troll. And then everything else after that is pretty much the same. You know, we we get um, Stella waking up finally. And, um, I don't feel like there's a ton of different dialogue after that. Um, I mean, it's all different for sure, but yeah, that is the first episode of Winx Club. Una fata a gardenia, unexpected event. It feels like magic. Welcome. (laughs) So while the four kids dub gets a lot of slack from fans that didn't grow up with it for drastically changing the order of which things happen in some of the episodes and completely omitting other scenes altogether. I must say, I do prefer the dub as it is very nostalgic to me. It's what I'm used to, you know? That being said, I understand a lot of people's frustrations with it as it takes 
many liberties from the original script and dialogue. Um, I don't think that the changes take away it from, you know, the original story at all. I actually think that it might even add a lot of different, you know, takes to the original story in some ways and, and maybe even enhance it and make the story better told. I, I, would even dare to say. But I also think that a lot of the fans that give the most grief about the changes that 4Kids made um, are those who have never really given the 4Kids dub a full watch through, a full good old college try, you know, a full chance to, to experience you know, the good of it. And so I think that if more people truly watched the four kids dub and they would actually come to like a lot of the changes and differences presented compared to other dubs of the show. So I don't know, I guess just, you know, as, as we are going through season one of Wings Club and we're rewatching back to back the Cineloom Ray English dub and the four kids dub, like maybe just, you know, give it a chance and, and see which one you like better. And if you do still like Cineloom better, like whatever, that's cool. Like, I think that it's so cool that we have so many different dubs and, versions of the same series that it kind of gives a different life to to each dub and it's really fun and exciting so i don't know so we're going to um as we go through these episodes we're going to also look at some of our favorite winks forever moments. This segment is going to be deciding the most winks-tastic moment of the episode. And I would be remiss to say if it wasn't the moment where Bloom discovers she is a fairy, she has powers when she is being, you know, snatched up by Nut the ogre. And she's like, you know, let me go, let go. And, and the dragon flame the dragon fire rounds bloom and goes off into the sky and like you know like explodes like that's so cool and uh, it's just such an iconic winks moment um so for me that is my winks forever moment in this episode is when bloom actually discovers that she is a fairy so in the comments below on youtube or or even on my social media um let me know what your Weeks Forever moment from season one, episode one is, and I would love to discuss it with you. All right, friends. Well, that is the end of the season one, episode one dissection. Um, Let me know what you think. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. So if you have any comments on this episode, anything that you would like for me to discuss, um, leave me a comment on over on social media. Leave me a voicemail over at speakpipe.com forward slash Winks Forever podcast. And um, maybe I'll feature you in the next episode. Stay up to date on all the Winks-tastic content on our social media at Winks Forever Podcast. The theme song for the Winks Forever Podcast is She Makes Magic by Big Wild. Until next time, I'm Lola Valentine, and this is the Winks Forever Podcast. Mm-hmm.